I'm not sure. Oh, all right. I think we're live. Lorraine, we're live. Excellent. So this is it. Um, coming to you live. And, and I've never done this before. So we'll just see how this goes. But we are here with Lorraine Ross. Lorraine is the Education and Support Coordinator with Alzheimer's Society of Hastings, Prince Edward. Good morning, Lorraine. Good morning, Rebecca. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining me for my first little official show here on online. Um, so Alzheimer's Awareness Month is winding down. Um, it's been going on for all of January. Uh, and I know, Lorraine, you in your role um, have been able to sort of utilize a very unique personal background to bring something very special to what you do. So just maybe start by giving us a bit of a background as to what you do every day in your work. Thank you, I will. Um, so my job as education support coordinator is to support families and caregivers and loved ones and people living with dementia. So part of the Alzheimer's Society things that we do is um, support and educate people, um, help them go through this journey, help them to find the goodness in the sadness because it is a sad journey, but I always remember, remind people that find some joy. And I know that sounds very sort of oxymoron because the disease, as we know, is, is a fatal disease. But f try to find that joy in there because you don't want to look back and think about all the bad, you know, find some good in there. So our job is to help people find that and to navigate through, through that. Very good. Um, and you sort of, this job wasn't something I don't think... Uh, if my understanding is clear, it may not be that it's not something you went after and you thought, oh, I want to do this. You sort of fell into this naturally, right? Yeah. So my background is nursing. I was an RPN for number quite a few years, over 30. And a good chunk of that time I spent working with people living with dementia and their families. So I did adult day programming um, as well as working in long-term care and I worked in activation. So my, my job focus was very much dementia. Um, and then I lost my job as a lot of people did uh, uh, over the years. And uh, this job came up and I thought, you know what, I, maybe I could do this, you know? Um, so yeah, here I am. I, I applied and they took me and they still have me. So I must be doing okay. <laughs> I love you. Um, so, so then I feel like what happened was based on my conversations with you, knowing you personally, Lorraine, is you sort of discover that, wow, this, this might be a really cool purpose that you just kind of fell into because you have a bit of a backstory, well, a big backstory um, in your own personal life that you've been able to sort of carry over into what you do now. Can you talk a little bit about that? I can. Thank you. So uh, my personal background in a nutshell is um, I grew up in foster care most of my life, back and forth with my mother. Uh, very tumultuous relationship. This is, you know, lots of people have those kinds of family dynamics, especially in my career. I find that out a lot. And um so it's okay. I sorry. Let me see where I was going with that. So um, in my job, I run an adult um, caregiver support group. So for adult children who care for a parent. So as we all know in life, not every family is the little white picket fence, and mom and dad are happily married, and everything's joyful, and you have beautiful Thanksgiving and Christmas dinners, right? There's lots of families who are very dysfunctional, and that's the that's just the reality of it. And so my uniqueness that I bring to my that particular support group is that I actually do understand what some of those adult children are going through. I always say to those to my, that support group, your trauma is your trauma. And I firmly believe that, you know, you can grow up in that terrible environment right beside somebody shoulder to shoulder. And the way you interpret that and the way they interpret that are going to be completely different. You can't point fingers and go, well, mine was worse than yours because we all deal with things differently. We're individuals, right? We we um, thrive and survive differently. So I always say to them, your trauma is your trauma. But here's what happened to me, you know, and I give them permission to have those mixed emotions because as a caregiver, you have those regardless if you have um, a bad relationship with your parent. Right. So for me, because I didn't have a relationship with my with my mother over the years, it was on and off. There'd be big gaps, like 10, 15 years when I wouldn't speak to her. And then, you know, all of a sudden you come back in. So I tell them it's OK to have those sad feelings, you know, but you have to let those feelings go when you started to care for them as a as a, a person living with the disease. 
I did not go back into my mother's relationship or in, into her life with her relationship, knowing that or expecting that I was going to get closure for what had happened, because I knew that was never going to happen. And I do make that clear to families, you know, like you can't go backwards, right? You can't go backwards because that is going to do nothing but hurt you more you have to move forward. So I give them permission to do that. I help them set up boundaries for themselves. I had a beautiful conversation last week, quite a lengthy conversation with an adult daughter. And she was beside herself, beautiful, well-educated woman, uh, just didn't know what to do. Came back into her mother's life, very similar to mine, <clears throat> excuse me. And I said to her, set up boundaries. When you go to see your mom or when you're on the phone with her, say, you know what, I've got to go, I've got something on the stove, or somebody came to the door. When you're starting to feel uncomfortable, it's okay to walk away. And those are just the kinds of things that I share with uh, with my caregivers when I'm talking with them. It's really interesting to me, Lorraine, because that is something that until I talked to you, I had never considered before. We hear so much of these days uh, of, of adults having to care for our parents um, as they grow older and in various situations, um, Alzheimer's being one of them. But I had never really considered that that idea that, and it must happen often, where an adult child has to care for a parent, or I mean, there may be situations where there is a, a spouse and, and it's someone that you disconnected from and you're not married to anymore and you've been divorced for years. Maybe it was a contentious divorce and now they're alone and they're struggling with Alzheimer's or some other disease and you're the only person perhaps mm -hmm. left in their world that's there to maybe care for them. So I had never considered that before. So that's a very unique situation. Yes, and it's uh, the the latter situation you mentioned is is very common as well. You'd be quite surprised how many people come step back in to help people, right? Because you, I, you know, I guess for me personally, it's all about dignity. You know, I mean, as I said, I had this very tumultuous relationship with my mother, um, and I didn't step back into her life to be a martyr and go, "Oh well, look at me, I'm the better person." You know, I didn't do it for that. I did it because. I can't help that she was a terrible person, but I can, I can do what I need to do, what I think people deserve, which is dignity and respect. And that was my purpose moving forward with that. That's incredible. You know, one of the things that I find, find difficult, and I have told this to my support group, um, when I tell people when they go to visit somebody in long-term care, uh, you know, take photo albums, chat about things in the past, because it's that long-term memory that stays intact, right? So you can go back pretty far and talk about, you know, when we went to the cottage, look at these pictures of Christmas, look at Auntie June, look at this, right? But for me, when I went to visit my mom, she doesn't, she's not that far from here where I live. And um, I struggled, like I struggled, you know, I've got a pretty, i I think I've got a pretty good tool bag, right? I've had a lot of professional experience working in this field with people living with dementia and I worked in activation. So I know all about, you know, stimulating and do all that kind of stuff. But honestly, I sat beside her. She took my hand and she just looked at me and I had zero. I had no, I couldn't think of anything to say, Rebecca. My heart was fluttering. It wasn't because I was afraid of the environment I was in. It was because I don't know what to do. I don't know how to engage. And we both just sat there and she looked at me and she says, I'm sorry, I'm not talking much. I said, that's okay. I said, we can just sit here. We can just hold hands. It's all, it's all good, you know? And she just smiled at me. She goes, okay. And that's what I had to do. But my, my intellectual brain was just swirling because I thought, I've got to do something, right? Yeah. I had nothing. I had nothing. I had nothing to pull on because I didn't have that past relationship, right? So I think moving forward um, for myself is I will do a little bit more research and find out what some of those tools that can be for people who have who have that non-relationship to pull from when you go to yeah. visit your loved one. It's hard. It's a hard environment. It. Yeah. And did that happen for you, that, that, that amazingly emotional moment that you just described, did that happen before you got involved with the Alzheimer's Society, Lorraine? That was a while back, right? No, this just happened just recently. So wow. I've, been with, I've been with the Alzheimer's Society almost five years. Mm -hmm. And because of, um, a traumatic event in my mother's life. Uh, my brother who lives in the area um, helped 
move her. And then just things just kind of fell apart. And uh, we got her into long-term care. So she's actually in, in the area, in my area. And uh, she's been there for about two years now, two and a half years. It, but I will say, even though she was close and I was, you know, taking phone calls and doing all those things, um, I didn't go and see her for probably a year and a half. I couldn't do it. I just couldn't yeah. do it. Even though she was small and fragile, I was protecting my own mental health. I had to, I had to really work myself up to go and see her. And it was yeah. funny because when I did go and see her, she recognized me. We had our COVID masks on, right? And when yeah. I came into the, into her area, um, I asked where she was. I didn't recognize her. I hadn't seen her. I had not seen her physically in 15 years, at least 15 years. And so my daughter was in college at Fanshawe. So it was a long, quite a long time ago. So I think it was 15 years ago. And, um, I pulled, I said to the nurse, can I just pull my mask down a little bit? She goes, yes. I went like, I said, hi, mom, it's Lorraine. Well, I mean, I didn't look like this 15 years ago, right? And uh, she's like, oh, and she kind of yelled out. And I thought, oh gosh, here we go. I thought, you know, she was going back yeah. to being her old self. And yeah. uh, she was good. She, she was happy. And, you know, I just kind of chatted. I showed her some photos. She asked me about my kids. She asked me what I did, you know, just. You know, she asked me questions, but there were things that she she already knew. But that's that's the disease, right? So, yeah. but when I left, um, sorry, let me just back up for one second. I went at eleven o'clock because have working in long term care. I knew that lunch was they start willing people into the dining room around twenty two quarter to twelve. So to me, mm -hmm. that was my that helped put me at ease because I knew I had an escape. Yeah, I knew that. That's all I had to do, especially for my first visit, right? I had to make sure that I could get out. I needed to have a plan. So I wheeled her in. I said, oh, I've got to go. It's lunchtime now and I'll be back. And, and that was that. I got into the parking lot and I burst into tears. But I stopped myself because I didn't know why I was crying. I said to myself, why am I crying? I don't know why am I crying. I was, it wasn't mad tears. It wasn't sobbing tears, which I thought they were going to be. I was just crying. I don't know if it was relief. There was a lot of mixed emotions there. And I really haven't really dissected what they were. I haven't delved into it very much, but it was, uh, it was very emotional. And so every time I go, I give myself a boundary. And I tell, I tell the people in my particular support group, give yourself a boundary. I used that I had groceries in the car the last next time I went. Mm -hmm. I've got to go. I've got ice cream in the car. Oh, my gosh. You know what? Ice cream is going to melt, you know, even though it's cold. And she kind of laughed and off I went. Right. So that was my that was how I got out of it. So yeah. it's OK to do those things and use what I call creative communication. So you have to start, you know, sort of spinning those little yarns because it's not malicious. It's what's going to help them and it's what's going to protect you. And I think most of all, that's what's important because for most people, they step up because it's their parent and they've had, you know, probably a bad, you know, some of them have had a bad relationship with them, but it's still their parent. You know, yeah. they still love their parent and they want to be there. So they're struggling with that. So I think having set some boundaries and knowing that you can follow those that you have those options. I think it's really important for people. Well, I think it's very brave of you that you having, you know, based on that, your relationship with your mom growing up. And then, then now that you are, you know, a caregiver to her through her, you know, struggle with Alzheimer's, it's amazing, Lorraine. And it sounds like you have learned so much from that experience and you've been able to take that into your work and help others, which is just that sort of it, to me, it does seem like that's, your purpose. You found a really amazing purpose through all of this. Well, thank you. And I think part of the catalyst towards that, my, my job and doing this is because um, when I was young, I had a social worker. I had many social workers in my life and um, you know, they're great. They did a great job for me. But one thing that always really stuck in my brain was that they would say, you know what, Lorraine, it's okay. I understand. And it was that one word, understand that always played heavy on me all these years later, it's still there because I knew they didn't really understand. You know, you read a book that helped you to, to, you know, understand in that way, but you didn't physically go through anything. So you don't really understand. And for a long time, I wanted to be a social worker, 
but I'm too emotional. So I knew I couldn't do that job. <laughs> not that nursing is not emotional either. So anyway, it was a bit of a roller coaster choice. But um, I, when I say to my caregivers and support group, I understand. I feel very, very blessed that I can say, I really do understand. You know, I don't understand everything. Nobody does. Right. But right. I have a lot of empathy and sympathy because I, I really do understand what you're going through. And if I can say one thing that can help them, to me, yeah. that's the best part. I mean, and that's, we all do that at the Alzheimer's Society. We all are here to listen and support, you know, and especially through all of this, you know, crazy covid this time, um, you know, our, our goal is to reach out to our caregivers and support them, you know, regardless of where they are. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you for what you do. And I can only imagine um, how amazing that is for the people you work with to hear those words. I understand and they, and I'm sure they feel and know that you do. So that is something very unique and amazing you bring to your work, Lorraine. And thank you for sharing all of that with us today. I'm just so grateful to, to know you personally and, and to be able to share that story is pretty cool. Thank you so much, Rebecca. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And I want to say hi to Kimberly Ann, who just said hi to us. And I want to, I should have mentioned at the first that if anyone had any questions for you, they could feel free to ask questions. But um, this is a learning thing as we go. So next time we chat about something, another cool thing that you're involved with, uh, the Cauldron Sisters. Yes. Uh, I'd love to talk to you about that sometime. Um, and maybe we can invite some questions at the very beginning and have some people ask questions. And yeah, that'd be great. We'll just. Learn and grow together as we go with all of this. Absolutely. And that's what it's about. That is. Thank you so much, Lorraine. Thank you for everybody who tuned in on Facebook and Twitter and uh, YouTube. And this will be um, up there for people to watch afterwards, too. So thanks, Lorraine. Have a great Sunday. Thanks, Rebecca. You as well. Have a great day. Great. Bye, everybody. Have a good day.